This is Dr. Aftab Ahmed with the program Innovative Pakistan with Dr. Aftab. So today we are here with a program on a very different topic uh, that is not among the topics that we have discussed in our previous shows. So we mainly discussed in our last shows about uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, and also about the higher education. But today we are going to talk on a very different uh, thing that is emerging trends in digital marketing. And today with us are the young entrepreneurs, including Mr. Hassan Abdullah and Ms. Mubashra Ali. So thank you very much for joining us today in our show about uh, emerging trends in digital marketing. So we will uh, continue the discussion about their educational journey, uh, where they have got their education, and then we'll discuss the main topic uh, that why they have started this uh, like they have started a startup and uh, what are the challenges being the young entrepreneurs and how they have overcome and mainly will focus about uh, what are the trends in digital marketing what are the current trends and uh, what could be the future so we uh, start the discussion with miss mogashra so uh, anish you would like to know your own journey your educational background and also briefly tell us why you have jumped up into the into the entrepreneurship. Okay, so thank you so much for inviting uh, to the show, and uh, I'm grateful to you. And uh, uh, being, uh, I'm an engineer mm -hmm. from uh, my background, educational background, and after my engineering, I realized that uh, this is not what the Pakistani market needs. Right. Uh, Pakistani market doesn't need you as an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, that need a person who is skilled in every aspect, in every field, right. in any kind of work. So uh, that's where I thought on it. I have a thought, and uh, then I started my masters. Mm -hmm. I did my masters in engineering management. So there is when uh, something clicked in my mind that I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And the reason I want to be an entrepreneur was. Uh, that uh, due to the uh, current marketing, what I have seen in the market, that uh, the workplace that is not up to uh, that is not for the woman. The place I am working in that is not for me. So basically, uh, after that, I thought of uh, becoming an entrepreneur. I, I jumped into a field which is totally uh, irrelevant of my current field. Mm -hmm. So I jumped into uh, digital solutions right. and uh, then I realized the potential in the market that it has, especially the Pakistani market. Mm -hmm. They have a huge potential in branding and marketing strategy right. uh, where we can, uh, pro we can promote uh, Pakistani, uh, Pakistani, it can promote Pakistani uh, brands mm -hmm. and uh, we can help Pakistanis to build uh, their name in the international scale. Right. That, that's really interesting that a woman has now into a totally different way because Pakistan really needs the entrepreneur. This is what we are discussing in our, like all the programs, that this is how Pakistan can really prosper. And entrepreneurs are the people who can really help to uh, boost the economy whatever they feel they are working, either they are working in fintech, they are working in health tech, they are working in ed tech, uh, or they are working in agriculture. So if they will start something, uh, they can really boost uh, those things. So it's, it's really good, we'll further discuss. So uh, I will definitely ask uh, Mr. Uh, Hassan that uh, what is your educational background and how you uh, jumped into uh, being the entrepreneur? So I'm grateful to be here and my uh, basically I'm an electrical engineer and I did mm -hmm. my bachelor's from National Institute of Technology and you know I was in, uh, I'm not from the kind of family that works in the business line but uh, somehow in my college days I got to know what our investment was and that is from where I started all uh, this entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. First off I started with my, uh, I started investing some amount which was about 5,000 rupees initially. Right. I invested that with my cousin and then I got about 50% of interest which was way too much for that time. Right, so exactly. That is the place where I got that spirit to continue this journey. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So uh, like another question that's like very important, does our education system what do like being an engineering background and being with the biomedical engineering background, why do you think our universities they are rightly preparing our students 
uh, to start their own businesses or uh, going into the entrepreneurship. So, Anmavashya, what do you think? Okay, so uh, as an engineer, uh, I have taught, I have been taught in my engineering degree mm -hmm. a course of entrepreneurship. Right. And during that, uh, we were somehow prepared, but uh, mostly we are not convinced because overall my degree I was being prepared like I have to solve the problem, I have this kind of skill, that kind of skill. But I was I was taught a little bit about entrepreneurship, but I wasn't at that time set because I I didn't know about the market, I didn't know about how the market is working, what is the current need of the market. So when you uh, when you ultimately jump into the market, you get to know about the market. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the point when you realize that you have you have a you should have something that you should own right. that you should love to work. Mm -hmm. That that's really good. So. Uh, Hassan, what do you think? What's your perspective? Uh, in my perspective, unfortunately, what uh, you know, I've been an engineering student myself. What we are doing is that we are just producing engineers that have no target, no aim. Mm -hmm. uh, as an engineer, we are taught to not think out of the box. Right. And <laughs> personally, for both of us, mm -hmm. I m must say that uh, we both uh, were like we cannot be like other engineers. Mm -hmm. We have to think out of the box, and that is why we're here, and we have our own company and startup. Right. So uh, now moving to your own startup. So what actually moved you uh, to think that uh, yes, uh, we like most of the young engineers, they prefer to go into the job sector, and they really struggle for that. And initially, what I like came to know that the salary is not also that good. But on the other side, if you talk about the innovation and entrepreneurship by right? the entrepreneurs. There are so many challenges, especially not only like starting from your own family, initially to convince them, and then moving into the market. And we know that uh, the, even in the startups, there are so many challenges. More than 80% 80 80 startup, they don't survive actually after like five years. So there are so many challenges, but you have chosen this field. So at what point you could convince yourself so first is like you have to convince yourself that you you actually wanted to do this and you love to uh, do this kind of work and then how you convinced uh, your parents your family your friends that really you want to go into this field okay so basically uh, when we jump into the job market mm -hmm. so the jobs are not up to the mark and uh, mostly engineers are very underpaid Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, that was the point when I realized that I have to do something that I work and I cannot grind myself in the, into the 9 to 5 uh, job. So that was the point uh, that I think is the, my turning point of uh, my life where mm -hmm. I thought that no, I have to work on the things that I love and on the things that make me happy. So uh, if I can work for someone from 9 to 5, so why not I should work for my own self? Right. So, and after that, uh, <coughs> convincing my family, that was a very big challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, being, uh, being a traditional family, a Pakistani traditional family, I was always taught that this is the just men's thing and yeah, being a woman, don't jump into it. And But uh, after convincing them that, uh, let's just give me a try. So yeah, my father, he's a very much supporter, my brother as well. Uh, they both support me a lot in this because uh, without their support, I don't think so I, sh I would have continued this journey. Mm -hmm. So uh, after uh, after a struggle, a bit struggle, my family is now uh, with me in this journey and they're supporting a lot. So that's excellent. So Hassan, you have mentioned that your uh, family background is mainly in the job sector. So for the job sector, uh, this is what I also teach in different forums that if you are in the, your family is in the job sector, mostly your brain is wired in a way that you talk about, you think about, about the jobs. So when you realize that you shouldn't go for the job and you should go and how you convince your family, uh, which were like, for them job is better option. So <laughs> how you could convince them? So initially after completing my bachelor's in electrical engineering, I got a well-paid job uh, at a government organization. Mm -hmm. There I was, <laughs> I had a, a good pay, but I was not happy doing the work for them because I th thought that I had more potential than this. Mm -hmm. I was giving them my 9 to 6, uh, but somehow I was not convinced that I am doing my best. So I had to leave that place and I, my family knew that he's not happy. So once this opportunity arised, uh, we discussed uh, uh, this business with our parents 
they were very supportive. They didn't say anything. Now they are they are also very supportive, and they haven't uh, objected to this decision of mine. So that's really <laughs> really a big thing because for everybody uh, being in the government sector and being like well paid, uh, that is a dream kind of position for you. But if you have moved like from your dream like from other people dream position to something which is like very risky kind of things, but uh, you can have a better output. And the good thing is like uh, <coughs> as compared to sorry, <coughs> more most of the traditional families, so your family really supported you. So that that's really an amazing thing. And I think you you both of you are an example for the young entrepreneurs that if you have a will, definitely there are so many ways that you can do the thing. So after this I think we can jump into the main topic. So can you please uh, tell us that what are the current uh, trends in digital marketing in Pakistan mm -hmm. and also the overseas. So are we at the same pace or there are some differences and then what are the future trends? What is, what is coming in the future? So start with, we can start with uh, Ms. Mubashra. Okay, so <coughs> the current trends that we see in the current Pakistani market, if we specifically talk about it. So these are the, uh, the first one which came is the influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we can say that uh, internationally, uh, we have got a very knowledgeable influencers who will tell you, uh, tell you about education technology, health tech, fintech. But currently, the Pakistani uh, influencers, they are mostly the food bloggers, either they are uh, TikTokers uh, mm -hmm. or other people who, who, like, who, like, uh, who, who like these type of stuff, irrelevant stuff. I think uh, we should promote uh, influence marketing on the level that can promote education, mm -hmm. that can promote uh, technology, especially uh, in the era of AI. And since last two years, the AI have been uh, involved too much in our lives. So uh, th these are the things that we can uh, we can go in the influence marketing. We have a lot of potential in it, uh, ra uh, rather than jumping into the other stuff, irrelevant stuff. And uh, the other uh, thing, uh, the other trend that is usually that is, um, uh, you know, Meta. The Meta has taken the WhatsApp, the uh, Meta AI, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. That is really very thrilling. So uh, it's about a week ago. I was uh, uh, every, everyone is irritated right now these days with the Meta AI. Mm -hmm. Like, what what is this? I don't want this thing in my WhatsApp. So my father once said, "What is this? Like Meta AI? Can you please remove it?" But I was like, uh, "Sorry, it can't be removed right. because it's uh, it's AI." So uh, other people are not aware how to maximum utilize that Meta AI. Mm -hmm. So that is that is in the trend. So uh, if you just write uh, that Meta AI, any prompt, you give it an, any prompt like draw a logo for my company, let's say, that will actually draw a logo and that would be fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, recently I gave him a prompt and I was so amazed that uh, we have tool in our hand that is very trending and why our people are not aware of it. Right. So, uh, and the third one, uh, in my opinion, the digital trend that is going on is um, how we can uh, digitalize the traditional paperwork towards the, um, uh, towards the uh, software, towards the different, uh, different kind of, uh, you know, uh, different kind of uh, SaaS type of softwares which mm -hmm. can help them uh, digitalize the way they interact, either it's the private sector or it's in government sector. So uh, these are the main uh, digital trends in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Hassan, what's your perspective? Okay. Yeah, my perspective is that AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning are the buzzwords. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about them and uh, internationally there's uh, research and work going on many we uh, uh, every week we see a new kind of tool appearing in our uh, feeds uh, somehow pakistan in pakistan we have not yet uh, realized the true potential of that the only thing that uh, most of us and most of uh, students or people at our age use it for their assignments or mm -hmm. doing something else i think people should use that to learn something new like uh, for example quantum physics that is a very complex thing if you just search for that in chat GPT and you write, ke, explain it to me in the simplest words. Mm -hmm. I think if not all of it, you'll understand at least 50% of it. Mm -hmm. 
Additionally, I want to add something mm -hmm. that uh, let's say if there's someone, a young entrepreneur, and he wants to run his own company and he has thought of it, he can use all the AI tools available uh, for their branding, for the marketing, for the sales. For each and every domain, there is an AI tool. Mm -hmm. So that uh, international international market, uh, there is a lot of uh, potential in this, and people are working on it. Mm -hmm. But in the Pakistani market, I think there is a big room for it. Right. So. Uh, Hassan, what do you think? How important is this branding uh, for any like startup? Especially we, we are talking about the startup. So, what do you think? What is the role of branding in startup? So, in Pakistan, what we have observed that there are many companies and many individuals that have untapped potential and they are not aware of themselves, or if even they are aware, they do not know how to present themselves. Mm -hmm. Branding is what uh, is the front face of your company or the individual. Right. So if there is a company that there are a group of four individuals, they have made a company, they don't know how to present themselves. Mm -hmm. They know how to work. They are the best software engineers, they are the best programmers, but they don't know how will they sell their own self. That is where our company comes in and we tell them how you can brand yourself, how you can portray yourself to the market and what are the means and the ways that you can show yourself to the world. So I, I, I have a very like important question and that is like in you know in if we go in any country in the world. Pakistan normally have a sort of negative image. Like if you talk about, like if you go to America or if you go to Europe, if you go to any other country in Africa, uh, when we ask them, we are from Pakistan, and normally what media has portrayed them that like violence is going on, women uh, don't have like, uh, uh, they have a lot of problems there and so on. So how like branding can improve Pakistan and what kind of branding we should do for, for our country? Okay. okay, so I have been uh, to I have been to Turkey, I have been to Russia, UAE, mm -hmm. different countries. So there what I have seen is how uh, our young generation portray themselves in the eye of the other people. Uh, like I have been uh, in contact with a lot of uh, my international friends such as they are from Bangladesh, India, and uh, over there, uh, mm -hmm. there, there, there is a uh, there is a myth that we uh, Pakistani and Indians we are not uh, that much we are enemies and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But there we are also we are so much friendly with the Indians, with the Bangladeshians, and the other people. It it has been so um, uh, so grateful experience with all of them. So I think it, it's the responsibility of our youth that we have to change that branding image of Pakistan. We mm -hmm. are the new Pakistan and we should uh, we should uh, always promote the positive output of the Pakistan, uh, such as um, people, they are working on uh, positive impact on tourism in Pakistan mm -hmm. uh, and other IT domain, there are other people working, we are also working. So uh, during my visit, what I have seen is when we tell them about Pakistan, they people are really, really excited that we want to visit Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So I think whenever anyone uh, visits uh, abroad, outside Pakistan, so they need to show themselves as a Pakistan. They are Pakistan, our mm -hmm. youth is. So that's actually the personal kind of experience. So like I've been to uh, so many countries mm -hmm. and I usually have a like very good interaction. So in the era of AI, mm -hmm. in the present era of branding, so what do you think, what role we can uh, play, like if we give uh, an option to your company, okay, brand Pakistan, or brand incredible Pakistan, so what do you think, what step we, we can take to portray a better image of our country? Hmm. So first, what we can do is we can brand ourselves. We mm -hmm. can make uh, personal branding because uh, Pakistan is what uh, we are. We ourselves, uh, our uh, patriotism towards our country, our love toward our country, that is incredible. Wherever we Pakistani <coughs> goes, uh, we, we, we can't say that we don't love Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We all love Pakistan. Right. And uh, first of all, we can promote ourselves, how we can portray it, because what we gonna portray, that represents the Pakistan. Okay, great. So, because time is short, so we quickly uh, like ask few of other, so I can ask uh, from Mr. Hassan. So what do you think, uh, what innovation your company has brought in, in the era of uh, digital marketing and what it like make it uh, a different uh, from many other competitors or from the other companies. So 
basically what uh, the difference that we make at NOM Solutions is that uh, initially when we were search researching for the market, we realized that there was no one-stop solution. Sure. Like for if you have a new company that you want to present to the world, you have to go through three different companies. What we did that we combined all of that into a single place with the best rates and best charges sure. and uh, Alhamdulillah we have been successful at uh, creating brands and mm -hmm. uh, entities that are very successful. Great. Mm -hmm. And the difference that we make is that uh, most of the companies, they think that only coming to social media is the end of it. No, it is not. Mm -hmm. There are many different things. There are networking. And uh, in my opinion, that is also my advice to the uh, youth and the people that are listening, that if you are good at networking, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the thing I believe is that no one is good at networking. The people they, that are good at networking, you, you see them as successful examples for all. That's important. You know, uh, often we make a uh, quotation that your network is your net worth. So yes. being like, it's a, it's a very good advice for the youngsters that you have, you should focus on your networking. So another important question is like, uh, in Pakistan we know uh, we actually lack uh, in uh, digitalization. So many of the organization wherever we go, they are trying to be like even in the education sector, in other sectors. I've been to different times, I can't name them, but like being uh, visiting all those organizations is mostly the pile work and the pile are like piling up, piling up there mm -hmm. and it's very hard. So what kind of solution you can uh, bring to all those organizations, either they are the government one or the private one. So what solution uh, you can offer? <coughs> Hassan or whatever, like <laughs> both of you can answer. Okay. So uh, beside digit providing digital solutions, we also provide, we do digitalization. Digitalization is uh, the filing up of the files. We convert all of them into an e-cabinet where mm -hmm. you can access your every information. Uh, you can have that access within your phone. Like uh, if you are stuck in a traffic jam and uh, you have an important uh, file to send or an important uh, important thing to review, you can view that in your uh, mobile. So I think that's, that is where uh, there is a room for space, where uh, the Pakistani industry, either private or government, they both need to grow and where uh, we have different kind of software. Let's say talk about um, the uh, corporate sector. Corporate in corporate sector, there are currently there are softwares used, but there are international softwares uh, I, I don't want to name them right now, mm -hmm. but uh, those softwares are very, really, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So we provide uh, that enterprise uh, softwares at a very economical prices uh, that uh, that any company can uh, have access. Uh, the major uh, the major point that uh, that software has uh, that uh, you don't uh, have any risk of losing information or leaking information, which is very critical for the organization. Mm -hmm. So and every <coughs> member has uh, different access to uh, to the information. Oh. Uh, you can control the owner can control every kind of information. So you can also if you if you are an architectural firm and you are using a software. So using that software, uh, all the you can see um, you can see the current ongoing processes. Uh, it will uh, it will reduce the time taken for the operations to be done. And likewise, for the education sector, we have developed a software that is Education Information Management, mm -hmm. uh, Information Management System. That is basically an uh, an system that uh, is sort of e-school system that a school can use. Uh, mostly, school has a lot of documentation. You have to go towards admission. You have to fill this form, and after you have to pay the fee. You have to upload the chalan and all different type of stuff. And on the teacher side, there is you have to make monthly planner, weekly planner, yearly planner, and you have to uh, do this type of activities. You have to make the test. So all of these have been incorporated into just one mm -hmm. software, which is education uh, management inf and information system. Mm -hmm. And on that, we are promoting that in the Pakistani industry so that we can digitalize our education. Because uh, when we are not working on the root cause, we are not uh, working on the actual problem that we have. So I think that uh, this uh, software is very um, knowledgeable and informative for the schools which can save all of their problems uh, all in one, uh, at one platform. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. So uh, because we are running short of time, so quickly uh, 
just one more question. So why we need uh, these kind of digital solution? What impact uh, they can have or different kinds? Just like you have talked about the uh, system for the schools. So what impact do you think? How can they, how much they can ease the like things for the owners and for the workers and so on? Okay, so in 21st century, if uh, someone says they don't need to digitalize, then mm -hmm. uh, they are not uh, currently in the 21st century. Yeah. Uh, either they are living in the past or uh, they are just sleeping. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, everyone needs to, needs to digitalize. Right. Uh, everyone needs to have their own personal brand. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to uh, be heard by everyone uh, because every voice uh, needs to be heard and everyone for that everyone needs to build their own brand and for that purpose uh, for companies or for uh, if you look at international scale everyone is digitalizing then why not Pakistan. Great, so excellent uh, discussion. So at the end, thank you, you've been to this, uh, you have started your own uh, startup is almost one year. So what is your advice? I, I want to hear, uh, hear from both of you. So uh, we can start from uh, Mr. Hassan that what advice you will give to your fellow colleagues, either they are like from the engineering background or from any other background. So do you think uh, uh, what uh, kind of potential is there in area of entrepreneurship in Pakistan? And what is your own feelings and your own advice that you would like to share with uh, the young fellows? So in, in engineering, uh, we were taught to solve problems, mm -hmm. right? And why not use those skills to solve problems that exist in the market and you can actually get paid to solve them. Mm -hmm. So my advice is that think out of the box. Mm -hmm. Do not go into the straight path that uh, everyone tells you to go to. Stray away from that path and you will see that you have so much potential that you are not even aware of your own self. Yeah. And, that, and then as earlier I said, your network is your net worth. Mm -hmm. So that those are the main things that every engineer needs to follow, mm -hmm. not only for engineering but everyone. So what is your advice for the networking? How they can the young fellows they can build a better network? So how what help them to be a good like in, in that area? So how they can build their network? So the first thing is that you have to identify identify the people that are within your own circle. Like if you are a university student, you should identify the professors because. There are some faculty members that are very much, uh, they have a very good network and if you have a direct connection with them, a single person can connect with like a hundred more potential people. Mm -hmm. so that is the first of every student can do. Right. So, Ms. Mubasha, uh, what, what do you think? What's your advice yeah. for the young fellows, especially for the women who want to be into the entrepreneurship? And what is your message uh, after being a successful? I, I, I must say you are like quite successful because you have employed good number of people as well, so your startup is running well. So, what is your advice? Okay, so first advice would be uh, just just don't think about it. Just mm -hmm. do it. We have a lot of ideas in our mind on daily basis, but we don't implement all of the ideas. But implement one, but do it. And uh, if you are willing to be an entrepreneur. Uh, just go for the thing. Don't uh, think uh, that what what would happen, what would people think, will it work or not. Just uh, take risk in life. So excellent. Uh, with this, so we are very much thankful to Ms. Mubasha Anis and Mr. Hassan Abdullah for joining us today for today's show on emerging trends in digital marketing. And the takeaway message from both of you, uh, both of our guests is like uh, Hassan pointed out that you should focus on your network. And Ms. Mubasha, she has pointed out that just do it. It's very important to actually jump into the field and then there will be so many opportunities for, for all of you. So with this, we uh, close our discussion. Once again, we are thankful to our young entrepreneurs. They spared the time and joined us for today's program. Thank you very much.